Hello, and welcome to another session on using Blender for video editing. Here we're going to talk about images, how to import them, and then what to do with them. If you have a single image that you're importing, you can use it as the background to your uh, project. You can use it maybe as an overlay for like a logo. Uh, if you import a sequence of images, Blender will treat that like the video strip that you get when you import a movie file. Let's uh, see it now. I am going to start by going to the Add menu, Image, oh, and then I will select this image, YouTube logo. A few things you'll see right away. So first off, um, this you can tell based off of the checkered uh, image back background here that this is um, an image that has uh, some transparency, but because of the fact that when you first load it in, it gets set to the, the cross setting for blend, you don't get to see what's underneath. So if you wanted to use this as a logo that you overlay on top of your video, first things first, click that and change it to overdrop. And now you can see what's underneath. Second thing is that you'll see um, it got imported as a rather small strip. When we look at the length, it's only 26, but no problem, it's just a single image. We can stretch it, we can change the size to whatever we want. So typically what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and right click on the right side and then just drag it out to however long I need. If I wanted it to uh, be seen throughout the entire uh, video, uh, of, of the resulting video, then just take it all the way to the end or even beyond, doesn't matter. Now that it's here as a strip, you can work with it just like you do with the video strips we've been dealing with. So if I wanted to stick this in the corner, for example, um, I have what I could do, well, because it's so large, I would have to bring in the transform um, effect. I could click on image offset, and then from there, I could try my best to move it into the corner, but that's a really large logo. So let me ha let me go ahead and keep that, but then I'll also make sure this is selected. I will go to Add, Effect Strip, Transform. And actually what, what you'll see is uh, now that I've added that, once again, we can't see anything because we need to go back up and sit set blend to overdrop and now we can see the background again and while we're at it let's go ahead and hide the original now so i'll right click to select the image strip and click that button so it's hidden just in case so it doesn't uh, do anything wonky on us later and now i can go back to the transform and finish the job by clicking on uniform scale and then clicking and dragging to bring that down and then i can continue to play around with that a bit, just clicking with my left mouse button and sliding my mouse up and down, or left and right rather, to adjust the settings. And there you go. Now I have now I have my uh, logo there in the corner, and as you can see, it, it'll just stay there and work nicely. So there you have it. That's as an overlay. What about as a background? Well, it's a um, similar idea. I mean, Let's undo what I did. In fact, let's go ahead and get rid of everything. I can start fresh. So I will jump back to here. Uh, once again, add image, pick the same one, and I will stretch it out. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it like that. And then I will take this video strip from my movie and press the G button and actually bring it up like that. Actually, I'll press the Y button to lock it in place so it only goes up and down. Okay, leave it right there. And of course, it's my video file is full size, so I can't see the, the um, background underneath. So I will have to, again, add a transform. There we go. And now I'll go back to this one to hide it. And then I will click again, right click on the transform strip. And now I will go down to uniform scale and enable that, size it down. And again, we have that checkerboard effect there. So I will, as a final step, we'll go back up to the top, click on blend, switch that to overdrop. 
And there you go, actually it's still a little bit too small. So let me, there we go. So just as, as an example, this isn't not a good example, but you can see then here in this case, we flipped it around. So now the image is uh, the background and we have the video running on top, okay? Um, the final thing that we had mentioned is using uh, a sequence of images and that becomes a video. So let's do that now. I will start a new scene. And again, it's the same process to start. I'll go to add image. And this time I will go into a folder that has a whole bunch of images in it. I'll pick this one. And to select every single image in the folder, the easiest thing to do is just press the A key. Now they're all selected. And I can then click the Add Image Strip button. And I'll press the Home key so we can see the entire thing, zoom out a bit. And you can see, here we go, we have added 2,048 separate images that now combined to create a whole, a whole uh, video strip in effect. So you can, uh, we can scrub through and you can see it's just like, it's just as if we had imported um, a movie file and got rid of the audio that came with it. And the, if, the end result is pretty much the same thing. We can work with it just like, just like the video piece from a movie file. So there you have it. Um, that's how you can work with normal images and sequences of images to bring those into Blender and then deal with them as you please. Uh, one thing that it does not do out of the box is import animated GIFs or GIFs. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. But anyway, you know those fun little, an uh, fun little animations that you can find online. Um, we're going to cover that in the next session. So if you're interested, stick around and we'll see you shortly. Bye now.